Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. Hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a full day of eating featuring a couple of healthy recipes that are super easy to make, they're affordable, and they're great for meal prep. They keep well for a couple days at a time. So hopefully this helps you guys. And this video is sponsored by Lifesome. They are a health app that I've been using for a couple of years. The basic version is completely free to download. It makes it super easy to track your nutrition and your exercise. They also have a premium version that has a couple of extra features like macro tracking, Tracking, personalized meal plans, then access to a big healthy recipe library along with a few other things. And they gave me a discount code for you guys. If you're interested, you'll get 30% off that premium version. I'll have all that information linked down below. And actually, if you purchase it on or before January 10th, you'll get 50% off, which is super sweet. And I'll show you a couple of features from the Lifesome app throughout this video. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist or a dietitian. If you need any specific recommendations for your health conditions or your body type, I would recommend consulting with a doctor. Let's just hop into our full day of eating. I've been feeling kind of lazy in the mornings, so instead of taking the time to make my usual mocha pot latte, I have just been making a big jug of cold brew concentrate at the start of the week. Cold brew is like kind of expensive to buy pre-made at the store, so if you can make it at home, I highly recommend it. It tastes just as good. I really like using dark roast beans. I feel like they just taste a little bit better for the like longer extraction method. If you wanna get your beans ground kind of on the medium coarse side, I usually do it a little bit less coarse than I would for like a French press. And you just cover it in filtered water and let it steep for, I usually do it like 18 hours. You can do as few as 12, kind of just depends on how strong you want your concentrate to be. A couple years ago, I bought this like mesh cylinder. So I just put the grounds in there and then when I'm done brewing, I can just pull them out really easily, but you don't need it. You can just brew it directly in a jar or a pitcher. And then when you're done brewing, just pour it through a sieve lined with some cheesecloth or even like a paper filter. And yeah, the cold brew is stronger than you probably want to drink on its own. So I'll usually dilute it with a little bit of water or on this day, I use some soy milk. Probably my favorite feature that the Lifestyle app has is this barcode scanner. They have this massive library of products and ingredients. So instead of manually looking it up or entering in the like nutrition information from what you're trying to track, if the ingredient has a barcode on it, you can just scan it really quickly. It immediately pulls up all the nutrition information and then you can just plug in how many servings you are using or um, usually you can adjust it by like grams. I've never been one to track things like down to the gram or down to the ounce. I mean, obviously if you're an athlete or you're tracking your macros really carefully, that is an option for you. This silk unsweetened uh, organic soy milk is a kind that I always buy when I'm not making my own homemade nut milk. And then I really like the Tarani sugar-free syrups. They have a bunch of different flavors and I just usually add one or two pumps of that to my coffee. Then moving on for breakfast, I made a recipe that I absolutely love. I've shown it on the channel, I think one or two times before, but it's this really easy birch or muesli. You can make it in the fridge overnight. In a big bowl, I add one and a half cups of soy milk. Again, I use that unsweetened organic plain soy milk. You can use any kind of plant milk you like, but again, I like to use the soy milk just to get a little bit of extra protein. I like to add in some chia seeds, about a tablespoon. This just helps thicken the mixture. It adds in again, some extra protein, some healthy fats, some omegas. If you don't have or like chia seeds, you can also use flax seeds or you can just kind of skip it all together. I like to sweeten it with a little bit of maple syrup. You can use agave, coconut sugar, really any of your favorite sweeteners. You can also use like a calorie free sweetener if you like. I've made it before with like Swerve or Truvia. I'm a big fan of adding different kinds of dried fruit and I kind of just mix it up every time. But this time I added in a couple of medjool dates. What I did was I just took the pits out, I chopped them up and I soaked them in just a tiny bit, just enough to cover them of boiling water. It softens them up and just makes it easier to kind of get the sweet date flavor throughout the entire bowl of oats. I like to just give all of that a whisk first, make sure it's evenly combined, especially with the chia seeds. They have a tendency to clump together when you are soaking them. Then you add in your oats. I like to use quick oats. Usually I find it gives like the best creamy texture. If you want like a bit more of like a toothsome feel, you can use um, rolled oats. I absolutely love coconut. So I like to add in some unsweetened coconut flakes, mix that all together. And then here's kind of where you can add in any other things to customize it. I like adding in some vanilla extract, little dash of cinnamon. I have added like a little bit of 
of orange zest or lemon zest. I think the last time I showed it in a video, I added in some grated apple, which adds a little bit of extra sweetness and some crunch as well. I just left it plain this time, and then you transfer it to a container that is sealable and let it soak overnight, probably for at least eight hours, I think, to really thicken up. It looks like at this point really loose and like it's gonna be super runny, but trust me, between the chia seeds and the oats, it's like gonna get super thick and creamy and it's so good. Then the following morning, you can either eat it chilled, which I like to do, or you can heat it up. You can top it with some extra fruit or nuts and it's just so good. So that was my breakfast. Again, one of my favorite recipes. I come back to it time and time again. It's healthy, it's delicious, it's creamy and I don't know, if you are like me and you have trouble enjoying oats in other ways, I think this is certainly worth a try. Another feature that the premium version of the Lifesum app has that's super convenient is that you can input custom recipes so that if there's something that you eat all the time, you don't have to manually enter all the ingredients every single time. You can input all the ingredients and measurements for the full batch of the recipe and then input the number of servings you usually get out of it and it will do all the division for you. So that is what I have done with this Bircher Muesli and then if there's any days when I add extra fruit or nuts or something, I just add that individually for that day. Okay, moving on to lunch, I feel like I have not been eating enough like leafy greens lately. And I always notice that when I'm really on top of getting in my greens, like my hair, skin, and nails aren't really healthy. So I've been trying to be more mindful of that. So I ended up making a healthy Caesar salad for lunch. I made a high protein dressing using tofu as the base, which I'll get into. And then instead of croutons, I made some crispy chickpeas, which again, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know it's like one of my favorite snacks. It's super easy to make. So starting out with the crispy chickpeas, you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 400 degrees and line a baking tray. I don't really buy beans in cans anymore. I have an Instant Pot and I find it's just cheaper to buy the beans dry and then cook a big batch of them at the start of the week. I also like that you cook them a little bit more than you typically get them from a can so they're a bit easier to digest. So I cooked a big batch of just plain chickpeas. I measured out three cups of those and you just take a clean kitchen rag and dry them off as much as possible. If any of the skins pop off, you can like kind of just discard them, but you don't have to peel them or anything. Transfer them to a lined baking tray, and then I drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. I add some salt and some pepper, and you can customize the spices in like infinitely many ways, but I kept them really simple for the Caesar salad. I just added on some onion and garlic powder, and you just bake them anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes. I had taken mine out of the fridge, so they needed the extra time. I did the full like 40, 45 minutes, and every 10 minutes or so, you just wanna give them a nice little shake to make sure that they're cooking evenly. So all those were getting nice and crispy. I went ahead and made my high protein Caesar dressing. I kind of worked off of the cashew Caesar dressing that I have on my website. I'll link it down below, but instead of using the soaked raw cashews, I used half of a block of medium firm tofu. If you can find silk and tofu, it actually works really well in this recipe too, but I just happened to have an already like half eaten block of tofu in my fridge. So I cubed it up, I added it to my blender. You add in some capers, some Dijon mustard, actually you can use any kind of mustard, but I had Dijon, some fresh lemon juice. Recipe on my blog calls for miso paste. I didn't happen to have any at that moment, so I ended up using a little bit of vegan Worcestershire sauce and just adding a little bit of extra salt because so paste is quite salty, but the Worcestershire kind of added that like savory flavor that I was going for. And then I had a few cloves of roasted garlic from earlier that week um, in my previous video or maybe a couple videos back, I'll link it down below. I show you guys how to make roasted garlic. It's very easy and it's just, it's the perfect thing to add into sauces, dressing, pasta. You can use it as a spread. It's very versatile. So I had a few cloves of that in my fridge and I just chucked it into my dressing, add a little bit of extra water water along with a few tablespoons of olive oil. You could leave the olive oil out if you want to make this like an oil-free dressing, but I always like the extra flavor that olive oil adds and the texture. It makes it a little bit creamier. And then I just blended all that together. I really like making kale Caesars, but I happen to have some romaine on hand from my produce box. So I chopped that up, gave it a good wash, and then I tossed my dressing on the romaine, gave it a little sprinkle of nutritional yeast. You can add the nutritional yeast to the dressing too, if you like. But traditional Caesar dressing usually contains some Parmesan or it's topped with Parmesan. So the nutritional yeast kind of adds that like savory, cheesy flavor. Then I topped it with a nice big handful of my crispy chickpeas. I feel like adding a lot of healthy fats 
or protein to a salad is a good way to make it very satisfying. I just remember when I first went vegan and I was trying to eat like super high carb, low fat, low protein. I would try to make these big salads with like fat free, uh, protein free dressings just out of like pureed bell peppers and stuff and it was not satisfying at all. So this dinner recipe is actually the one I'm most excited to share with you guys because I get requests all the time to make more recipes featuring soy curls and uh, have not really been on top of that, but they're really just so good. They're really affordable. I get mine from the Butler website directly because um, usually if you order from them, they sneak in a few samples for free. Like they've given me samples of their taco crumbles, some of their vegan jerky and just, it's pretty sweet. If you're not familiar with soy curls, they're just these little dehydrated chunks of soy protein. Um, if you've ever tried TVP, it's like bigger version of that. And it kind of works like tofu in that it's really good at absorbing different flavors. Uh, it works really well with some sort of marinade because on their own, they don't taste like very much, but they're very high in protein, low in fat, and they kind of have like a texture that's reminiscent of chicken, not entirely spot on obviously, but it works in a lot of recipes where chicken is typically called for. Like I have a chicken salad recipe using soy curls on my blog. I'll link it down below. So anyway, for dinner, I ended up making some soy curl tacos with carne asada marinade. You're always gonna wanna start out by soaking your dried soy curls in boiling water. This helps to rehydrate them and it kind of rinses off like any of the extra soy curl dust from the box with a bag. So just cover them with boiling water. You can use uh, vegetable broth if you want to infuse some extra flavor. I always find it's kind of a bit of a waste because I always end up using a marinade as well. I let them soak for about 10 minutes and then I go ahead and I transfer them to a nut milk bag. You can use a clean tea towel or a couple layers of cheesecloth if you have those instead. And then I just squeeze out as much of the excess liquid as possible so that it's nice and porous again and it can absorb your marinade. For the marinade, I use a combination of soy sauce, orange juice, lime juice, apple cider vinegar. You can also use just distilled white vinegar. Lots of garlic. Y'all know I'm a garlic fiend, so I put in like five or six cloves of minced garlic. I sliced up a jalapeno as well. You can leave this out if you don't like spicy food. This jalapeno that I got from my produce box last week was really spicy, so... For spices, I like to add in some ground cumin, and then these two are optional, but I find they add a lot of extra flavor. I added in some ancho chili powder and some chipotle chili powder. If you don't have the powder, but you do have like one of those cans of chipotle peppers and adobo sauce, you can add in one of those peppers instead or like a couple tablespoons of that sauce from the can. And then I add in a lot of chopped cilantro. Again, you can leave it out if you're one of those people who thinks cilantro tastes like soap, but I am a great lover of cilantro, so I add in a ton of it. Give that a good stir, then pour it over your soy curls. Toss them really well so they're all evenly coated, and then just let them sit to marinate. I'd say you wanna let them sit for at least two hours or you know four hours or overnight if you can think far enough ahead, which I didn't actually. If you happen to remember, it is good to give them a stir like two or three times over the course of their marinating so it's all evenly coated. Before it was time to serve, I threw together a really simple pico de gallo, chopped up some tomatoes, added some minced garlic, more cilantro, because we love cilantro, some finely diced onion, and some lime juice. And then of course I just seasoned with salt and pepper. I really like to cook the soy curls on cast iron. I find it gives it a nice char, but you can use any sort of nonstick uh, cooking implement you have. I start out by adding in some sliced onion. And once the onion starts to take on some color, I add in some sliced peppers, let those soften up a little bit, and then set them aside. Then I add in some of my soy curls, and then I cook them until they start to take on a little bit of a char as well. The recipe for the carne asada soy curls I have down below is for like a pretty big batch, so you can scale it down if you want. It calls for an entire bag of the butler soy curls. I heat up a couple of corn tortillas just to make sure they don't break on me, and then I put everything together. I like to top it with my pico de gallo, and a little bit of mashed avocado. And I loved this recipe so much. I've been meaning to test out a carne asada soy curl recipe for the longest time, and I'm sad that I waited so long because it's so good. It's definitely going into my regular rotation. But yeah, this recipe has definitely inspired me to start cooking with soy curls again to try to find more creative ways to use them. So 
you can look forward to those in future videos. And yeah, they're just such a great source of protein. They're a lot more affordable than most other like vegan faux meat alternatives. And you guys know me, I've never been like super strict about tracking like my calories to the T, but I've always tried to be mindful that I'm getting enough protein, um, especially during periods where I'm prioritizing strength training more, which I haven't really been over the past couple months just because I've had trouble kind of adjusting to not going to the gym. But Stephanie Buttermore did just have a bunch of her training programs half off. So I ended up buying her at home training program. So I'm just excited to get strong again. And it always helps to be kind of mindful about how much protein you're intaking. Um, even if it's just kind of loosely, which is how I am typically tracking things. So to round out the day, I wanted to share a cookie recipe that's also higher in protein. So I use tahini as the base. If you don't like the flavor of tahini, you can use almond butter, cashew butter, peanut butter, any of your favorite nut or seed butters. I happen to really like the flavor of sesame in desserts. If you guys have ever tried a halva, oh my God, it's so good. So I just use some plain tahini. I use flax egg to bind all my ingredients together. It's just flaxseed meal soaked in water. Great source of fiber as well and some extra healthy fats, omegas, protein. I use some melted coconut oil. I treated myself for Christmas to this jar of vanilla bean paste, so I used some of that instead of vanilla extract. And you just whisk all that together. And then for my dry ingredients, instead of all-purpose flour, I used a combination of almond flour and coconut flour. And then you need a pinch of baking soda to help them rise, and then a little bit of salt. I ended up adding in some chopped vegan dark chocolate chunks scoop them out and then bake them anywhere between 12 and 14 minutes. And I gotta tell you, they don't look super pretty, but they taste so good. The tahini gives them this really interesting texture. It's like kind of crispy and I highly recommend it. I'll have the recipe all written out down below for you. And I may or may not have had some of those cookies for breakfast this morning with my cold brew. Anyway, that concludes my full day of healthy vegan eating. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll have more videos coming up very, very soon. And thanks again to Life Some for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget that you can get 30% off the premium version of the app. I'll have all the information linked down below. It's actually 50% off if you purchase it on or before January 10th. And of course, you can always try out the free version to see if it's something that you'd be interested in. Hope you guys are doing really well heading into 2021. I cannot believe how quickly 2020 flew by and how weird it was. Uh, hopefully on to bigger and better things this year. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.